Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my pronunciation practice series. This is class number 16. We're going to be working on, well, I'm going to give you a monologue from a very famous play, Death of a Salesman. We're going to work on a little part of it, and we're going to work on some important skills that you'll need to have fluency and good pronunciation in English. We'll talk more about those skills in just a minute. First, a little bit about me. I'm John Eric your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. And here are three quick rules to help you participate in my class. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. And that means, oh, let me get the right slide here. Hold on. Oh, nothing's working today. There we go. That means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Tune in to the new words or the new, in this case, it's going to be pronunciation techniques that you're learning. Use them as actively as you can throughout the class so that I can correct you and give you feedback. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So let me just get my name on the screen here and then we'll begin. Verbling teacher. All right. Sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to get the Hangout to cooperate pro properly. Let's see if it's working. Uh, there we go. I was backwards but now I should be okay. And let's get the window closed so you can see me. All right, so we're going to get started. You'll notice that I put a link in the material, which you probably have open in case you don't. This is going to be our, uh, our shared Google Doc in the chat window, and I'll also put it in case you don't have it. Let me see if I can get it here in the regular window. There we go. And I'm going to share my screen with you to show you exactly where we are and what we're doing. And then we'll get started. Okay, so first of all, when you open this, you'll see this logo, this graphic pronunciation practice. And you'll notice on the table of contents that there are five pronunciation tools that we're going to use and three charts. So you'll see tools, one, two, three, four, five. I'll go over what they mean in just a minute. Um, after that, you have the actual uh, classes. And today's class has a monologue from Death of a Salesman. Well, let's go down to that page because I'm going to give you some exercises to do before we go to the monologue. So I think we're on page 9, and I'm going to put a few exercises there on the page for you. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can get this set up for you. Here we go. All right. So in our five tools, what we're learning are five ways to think about a text. Or it's really something that you've heard, but it's important to have a text for you to practice with because you're going to need to analyze the text and apply these tools to the text. So we're going to look at one of those right now. We're going to look at one of those tools in depth. It's the Link It Up tool, Link it tool, which I think is tool number three in our series. Let's see. I think I called it tool number three. Let me see. Da, da, da. Yeah, the link it tool, tool number three. If you click on that in the table of contents, you will see that there's four ways to link things together. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this down on page nine so we can keep it in front of us. There we go. I'll recopy this down here so you can have it in front of you tool. Okay. Um, so first, let's go over those. Oh, this is, the numbering is wrong. There we go. Let's go over, ah, sorry. 
my document is not cooperating. There we go. Okay, no, nothing's cooperating. Google Docs sometimes does not cooperate. It keeps jumping me back to here. Okay, just ignore the numbering. I don't know why it looks like that. You know what? I'll get rid of the numbering, actually. Let's put it like this. Okay. So you'll notice that there's five ways, four ways, sorry. C to V. V is vowel. C is consonant. So that's the first way we can link things together. So in the expression one evening, we pass the N to the next word, evening. And you can see I wrote it phonetically. Wa evening. The second one is two consonants together. The consonants are M in warm and B in breeze. So instead of saying warm breeze, we say them together as if it's one word, warm breeze. The, la the third one, second to last, is basically the same as number two. It's just that the consonants are the same. So the M in some and the M in milk get put together in a longer consonant. So instead of saying some uh, milk, we say some milk. So you could think about it as dropping that E, or we never really pronounce the E at the end of a word. So you could think about it as just two words being put together into one word. We'll call that the long C link. So we've got the C to V, the C to C, the long C, and the final one is the magic the magic letter, the magic W or magic Y. In the expression, can you see it? We don't say it. Because there are two vowels, we have to insert a consonant that doesn't really exist. In this case, it's the consonant Y. Can you see it? Can you see it? Now that you've got that idea, I'm going to give you a few exercises to try on your own, and then we're going to apply this to our monologue at the end, and you'll have a chance to practice. And if you've prepared the monologue from last week, if you worked on it and you want to present it, this, you will have a chance to do that before the end of the class. Okay. So first of all, let me get my screen sharing off. Well, I can't turn my screen sharing off, can I? Yes? No? Yes, it is. It's working. Good. So when I'm showing you the document, hold on. Cat emergency. My cat's going crazy. Sorry. When I'm showing you the document, I can't actually see your faces, so I'm going to have to keep turning it on and off. So let me just say a quick hello to see who's here. Giuseppe, welcome back. Uh, the rest of you, I don't think I know. Tony, you were here the other day. I remember you. Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, Tony, where are you from again? Italy. Where in Italy? Uh, I am from the south, but I live uh, in Modena, in the north. You live where in the north? Modena. Modena. I don't know where that is. Yes. Where is that? Uh, near, near Bologna. Near Bologna. I know where Bologna is. Yes. Okay. Tony Bologna. I can, I'll never forget you. Tony Bologna. Okay. I, all right. Great. And let's see who else is here. Uh, so we've got T. Hello, T. Hello, teacher. Hi, T. Where are you from? I'm from Thailand. From Thailand. T from Thailand. I'll remember yeah. that, too. Tony Bologna, okay. T from Thailand. This is great. You should all be cartoon characters. It's Tony Bologna, <laughs> T, Thailand. Ella. Well, I can't think of a country that begins with an E except for Ethiopia. Ella, uh, you must I, be from. You must be I, from Spain. No, I uh, must be from Israel. Of course. That's what I, I was yeah. saying. <laughs> hey, that works too. Ella, Israel. Ella, Israel. It works. I'll never forget you either. Okay. And are you in Israel right now? Yeah. What time is it there? Uh, it's uh, noon. Oh, right. It's it's to the right of Portugal. Right, okay. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, it must be early. Okay, no, it's late, no, no. actually. Uh, and let's see. Carlos. 
Hello, Carlos. Hello, teacher. Where are you from? I'm from Costa Rica. From Costa Rica? Yeah. <laughs> you won the other day. I yeah, was watching exactly. that game. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It was a Every, surprise. <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone rhymes with their country, except Giuseppe. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> Costa Rica, Ella, Israel, T, Thailand, Tony Bologna. It's perfect. I'll never forget you. This is the best day of my life. Listen, I'm going to share my screen again. It's going to be really hard to see who's in the class, so if I skip you, just remind me. If I have some reason I forget about you, I'll try not to. I'm going to give you a few exercises to practice linking. So here's the first one. Uh, Carlos, where is the link in this sentence? Mm. Say, say it and then tell me where it is and I'll write it on the screen. Can you see the exercise one? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So say that for me and tell me where the link is. Mm. I think it's... Uh... Got, you got to say it first. If you don't say it, it won't, it won't be obvious. Okay. A serious accident. Good. between serious and accident yes. yep looks like this I'm gonna just write it as a link I'm gonna write it like this but of course oh, I'm sorry which which of those which part of the link it tool are we using is it C to V C to C long C or the magic the magic letter uh, the first one C V C to V, right? C to V. C yeah. to V. I'll put that here. And you're right. So I'm going to put C to V. And if I were going to write it phonetically, uh, I don't know if I can do that quickly here. No, it's going to be too complicated. I won't do it. Uh, next time I'll have my phonetic alphabet open. It's too difficult to copy and paste. So I'll, I can maybe write it like this. I won't do this for all of them, but for the first one, I'll do it. Let's see if I can get this working. There we go. So we're going to move that over here. Serious accident. The stress is on the first syllable. So I'm going to write it also like this. I'll put it like this. Accident. Syria. Syria. Serious. Syria. Area. Ah, it's almost like a. Uh, like this. Okay. I'm not going to write them all out, but that one, just to see what we're doing, I'll write it out. You can have a good example in front of you. Okay? And we're going to go around the room and see the different ways we can link things together. Uh, so after. T after. Carlos was Ella. Ella, let's take a look at this one. Uh, here we go. Okay, say it and tell me which of the four parts of the Link It Up tool are we using? Uh, the, exact, uh, the exact opposite. Uh, I think that uh, the link is between the uh, Z and exact. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what two things are we linking? Is in the D and the exact. Maybe I'm wrong. So the T? No, no. I talked about is. I mean, double e yeah. that we have. You have an e in Z, and you have e in exact. Oh, I see. E in the. Yeah. Say the. The, but it, it, it's supposed to be Z because it's uh, started with uh, E, the next word. That's yeah. true. That's true. But when you, but the name of it is the. Ah, the okay. Name of the, the word. So you have to say the. So the ah. E in the, and the E in exact. The exact. I agree with you. That's it. So, which of the Link It Up tools 
is it? Which of the is it C to V, C to C, long C, or the magic letter? Magic letter. The magic letter. The exact. Yeah, it could be. It could be the exact. You could say it maybe in two different ways. The 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 exact. The exact. If you say it slowly, it would be the magic letter. It's true. The exact could be. If you say it fast, it's the exact. The exact, the exact, the eh, the eh. Actually, let's see. <clears throat> I guess it doesn't really fit any of them because there's two vowels together, but they are different vowels. So let me see if I can. I don't know if I can quickly. I don't have my bookmarks here, but now I, I can't write the phonetic alphabet right now. But what I want to show you is the with. A long e like this, v, and then e, x, act. Okay, I guess I could write it like this more or less. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, because it's actually two vowels. The first one is an e, and the next one, the next one is an e. So, I agree with you. You could link it up. Using a magic Y, the exact, yeah, yeah. You could, but when you're speaking fast, we'll probably just run them together. So it's really none of the link it up tools, actually. So you mean uh, 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 to link exact uh, with opposite? So it uh, can be the exact opposite where T and O are connected? Um, in British English, yes. In American English, no. But this is good that you're pointing this out because actually, in this case, it's a V to V, which is not one of my Link It Up tools, the, the first one. But mm -hmm. let's put that there because that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't, I never really talked about the vowels like that. In the second words, it, it would be the ex, the exact opposite in British English. But I don't speak British English, I speak American English. What we do is we just drop the T, the, T, the, ex, the exact the exact opposite. Exact opposite. Uh, maybe. Maybe I would do it too. So that would be the C to V. Okay. C to V. Exact <laughs> like that. Ah. Exact top. And then that's it. Yeah, could be. Whoops. Let's do it like that. Opposite. Like that. So, yeah. But you pointed out something very good because I didn't really talk about the vowels earlier and, and I didn't add it to the Link It Up tool. But here, it really is two different vowels because the. The, the exact opposite. If you're stressing it, it's the. If you're not stressing it, it's the. The exact. The exact. And in that case, it would be, um, it would be just run together because the and a uh, exact. So, it really depends on how you say it. But I'm going to put it there because it's actually a good lesson for us. In the second word, it's C to V, because it's exact. And then, opposite, exact opposite, exact opposite. Probably, if we're speaking fast, we'll drop the K. Exact opposite, yeah. We'll drop the K. The K sound, we'll drop it. So, ta, po, sit, like that. Okay, but we've got a few others. So, let's go to, I think, uh, Giuseppe, you're next. Let's look at this one. Uh... What are we doing here that's a little bit different? So say it for me and tell me how I'm linking it. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I link sounds... seen plus it. Mm -hmm. Seen it. it. Magic letter. Seen it. Not magic letter. It's C to V. The end passes to the it. 
the yeah. end in C. Okay, okay, I agree. So I'm going to write a knit. But that's not all we're doing, Giuseppe. What about the first the first word? What about the first word? I've. What do we do with that? I've. How do we link that, or do we not link it? I've seen it, or I've seen it. I've. Mm -hmm. Seen it. Are we linking those together? No. I am. <laughs> <laughs> When a word ending with a consonant is followed by a word beginning with another consonant, there is no break. So that is our C to C, consonant to consonant. Oh, okay. I, I've seen. I've seen. It's one word. So it maybe looks like this. I've see. I've see like that, and then the nit goes to the second word. I agree with you on that. But the first part is going to be consonant to consonant. So it looks like this. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen. I've seen. It's really like that. So we run them together, the consonant V next to the consonant S. And we don't say the E in between them. Because otherwise, it would be like Italian. I've, you know, adding an extra vowel. But we don't do that in English. OK? so. The main thing is that it's actually consonant to consonant there. Tricky. Tricky but true. Um, one second here. Let me give you a different one. Ah, OK, here's a different one. So let's go to um, T. T for Thailand. Look at this. OK. Uh, this is an easy one, I think. Say it and tell me how I'm linking it. Uh, we said C to V between is and it is a C to V. Say that last part again. Between is and it, and what's the connection? What's the link? It's a yeah. It's a connection between is and it. I agree. C to Which, V. C to V. Okay, I yes, agree. Yes. C to V. Okay, and there's two things we're going to do. We're going to change the S to a Z. Who is it? Who is it? So it's going to be a Z I T. But you're absolutely right. It's C to V. So I'll write C to V next to it. Okay, but we still got the who is. What do we do with that? Uh, magic letter, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Who? Who magic is. letter will be W. And so now it looks like this. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? That's it. So I'm going to put, it's a little bit confusing here, but I'm going to put magic letter first so you can see it. I'll put uh, magic W. So who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Perfect. Okay. And where's the stress? Who is it? Who is it? It's probably it's probably the stress is probably on the we. It's probably the stressed syllable here. So I'm going to write that big, put it in bold so you can see that that's the stronger one. Who is it? Rather than who is it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't put the stress on the last word. It sounds a little unnatural, but probably on the verb here. Who is it? All right. One last one. Let's see who's left here. Yes, we got Tony from Bologna. Tony Bologna. Let's try one last one here. OK, say it and tell me how I'm licking it. Make bread. Mm -hmm. That's slow. If you say it fast, it's make bread. Make bread. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? Is there any link between the words? Make bread. I'm going to make I bread think, today. I think uh, 
C C C to C. I think you're right. Make bread is a C to C connection, just like warm breeze. And you'll notice that when a word ending with one of these consonants, p, b, t, d, k, g, in other words, p, b, t, d, k, or g, the k sound, the k sound, when one of those is followed by a word beginning with a different uh, consonant, usually a m or a n, doesn't have to be, but usually one of those, there's no air released at the at the end of the first consonant, and there's a very smooth change to the second consonant, as in make bread. Because we don't say make bread, we say make bread. It's like you stop it. So it would be make, it's almost, there's almost no K sound, bread. And that is C to C, C to C. All right. So I think you got the idea, more or less, how to link these things together. And I'm going to give you a different exercise to try. Let's see if I can do this right. Um, OK, what I'm going to do is to ask you a question. After I ask you the question, you're going to have to basically label my answer according to one of the tools that was used, the one of the ways to link it up. So I'm going to actually put this on the screen for you, like this. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, yeah, you can see it. There we go. And underneath, I'll try to put the answers on one page. It's going to be a little difficult. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can do this. Whoops, give me just a second. I have to go there on my... Hang on just a second. I've got to go there on my PDF as well, or else I'm in the wrong place. Uh, of course, I completely lost my page now. Hold on a second. This was 26, exercise one. Okay, I know where I am. So if I go there, 26, exercise one, where is it? There it is. All right, yeah, I, I can't. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. So basically, You're going to label it. Um, how are we going to do this? What's the easiest way to do this? I think the easiest way will be maybe we need to simplify this just a little bit. Oops. Okay. So you have to match the question with the answer. That's the first thing. Yeah, maybe I'll have, instead of me saying it, maybe I'll have you say it. And then afterwards, you're going to label it. Um, after you've matched the question with the answer, look at Part B and decide whether the links are, um, I guess we're, these are all going to be, yeah. I think these are all going to be uh, magic letters, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK. So basically, you're going to you're going to mark it whether it's a W or a, a Y. So if you think back to the one we just did, uh, the, the, the fourth one, the one that T did, who is it? Is that it? Was it where's the magic? Yeah, magic W. Who we? Who is? So you're looking for the W, the magic W in the who is. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, all of these are going to be magic letter. Uh, exercises. Okay? So I think that's it. So that sounds like the easiest way to do it. I'm not going to read it. You're going to read it. I will correct you if necessary. You're gonna, so you're going to match the letter. You're going to match the... Yep. You're going to match the letter to the response. 
and then tell me which magic letter is, needs to be inserted. So for example, where are you going? The response we put in the middle of the page there, to Austria is the only one that fits, to wa, to Austria. So there's a wa sound before Austria. So I'll put a little one here, actually. Let me use my little, there we go. So number one is going to be W, and it's going to be to Austria, like that. OK, I think we got it now. So these are going to run into the next, uh, it's a little bit hard to do this. Maybe let me give you a page break so we can see it all on one page. I'll move it down a page. So we're going to be on page 10. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see the answers. OK, so let's just go around the room, starting with Carlos. You have to ask the question and answer and connect it to one of the responses, and then tell me what the connection is. Which magic letter is being used? Right. Uh, the second one, right? Uh huh. Okay. The second is uh, when, and the answer is uh, tomorrow afternoon. Sounds good to me. So the link is uh, W. The link is W. Good. So when tomorrow tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. tomorrow afternoon, if you say it a little slow. Tomorrow afternoon. I agree. So we're going to say W. I'll write it for you. Tomorrow okay. afternoon. OK. I can't. i got to keep flipping back and forth. We're back to Ella. OK. Uh, the question is why? And the answer is uh, to see Adam. I agree. Okay, but what's the link? How are we linking it together? Uh, to see Adam, see Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, with Y. With a Y, that's right. But let me hear you say that. To see Adam. To see Adam. Yadam. To see Adam. Oh, I'm hearing you say Adam. I want to hear, I want to hear Yadam. To see Yadam. Okay. Remember, the, the Y, that's in English we say Y. In other languages, it might be written like E or I, E with another vowel. So here it's E A. So it's going to be E A. Dim. E A Dim. Can you see how I wrote that? So yeah. say for me again, to see Adam, E Adam. To see Adam. E Adam, E Adam, E Adam. Just like that, E Adam. And the E, phonetically, is this E. You'll see this in a dictionary with two dots. That means it's really the long E sound. It's a little hard to write on screen, but that's it. So we've got to Austria, tomorrow afternoon, afternoon, to see Adam. Okay, so far you're all correct. Who's after? Oh, it's Giuseppe next. Who is he? Who is he? My Yanko. <laughs> yes, good. Why? Magic why? My uncle. My Yanko. 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 That's it. So here, instead of the e a, it's e a. So if I was going to write it phonetically, I guess I'd write it e a, uh, and then n k o l, something like that phonetically. Not perfect, but you get the idea. E a, e a. That's it. And after you, I think it was t. We're back to t. Oh, okay, number five. Have you got cousins there too? Uh, and the answer is uh, no. They all live in France. So the connection is that uh, between they and all. Uh, right. Magic Y. Magic Y is correct. Very good. Maybe this is too easy. 
<laughs> no, everyone's, getting, everyone's getting these correct. I must be making this way too easy. Let's see. No. They are. Say that for me from the beginning now. I want to hear the I want to hear the they all because it's they y'all. So say the whole thing all. for me. No, the whole they all live. Yeah. The, no, they all live in France. They all live in France. If you go to the they south, all. if you go to the south of the United States, they don't say how are all of you. They say how y'all. How y'all doing? Y'all come back now. Y'all, because it's you all put together, which becomes y'all. But that became a separate word in in the dialect of English in the South. Y'all. Okay, that is correct. By the way. Tony from the city near Bologna. What about number six? How will you get there? Mm -hmm. By here. With y. Good. So it's a magic Y, right? Yes. Let me hear you say Bayer. Bayer. That's it. Bayer. So it's Bayer. Almost like there's two Y sounds. By I E and year, by year. Let me hear you say the question and the answer together one more time from the beginning. How will you get there? By year. Okay, good. How will you get there? How will you get there? How will you? How will you? It's it's like one word. How will you? How will you get there? How will you? How will you? Yeah, how will you? How will you? And one more thing. In Italian, the L is very strong, but in English, it's very weak. So we don't say how will ya. We say how will. It's will, like almost as if it's a, a U sound. Will. How will you get there? Okay, everyone's had a chance to do both exercises. So this was a review of the Linkit tool to remind you that there's four ways to link C to V, C to C. Long C and magic W and Y, magic letters. So we did one exercise to, re to review that. We did the second exercise specifically on the magic letters. I'm not going to do the whole thing because we don't have enough time. But now we're going to go to the monologue. In, in each class each week, I try to give you one new monologue to do. We analyze it in class or we analyze part of it because it's a lot to do. So we might just take a sentence or two. And then we can practice it in class, but the real work will come after class. When you try to take the tools, apply it, and practice it, and then the next class come in, and we hear the final result. Um, so we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to just move this down to the next page so we can see it all together. So I'm going to move it down to page 11. And I've got two texts. The original, I'm going to leave it as it is, and this one that says marked up, because I'm going to make changes on that as we analyze it. Let's put that in blue so you can see the difference. And what we're going to do is to read the first six sentences of this, line for line. And then I'm going to make a comment after each sentence because you're, each six of you are going to read one line. I'm going to make a comment or a correction, and I'm going to mark the text according to the comment or the correction. Um, uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to make a mistake. It just means that there's something that we need to think about in each of these. Let me give this a little bit more space, too. There we go. All right. So we're going to go back to Carlouche. Um, I'll tell you what, let me do one thing. Let me read this for you one time so that we can clarify what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, if it's not clear who's speaking and why, it's going to be a little bit harder to focus on the pronunciation. So before we start with you, Carlos, let's listen to it one time. I'm going to ask the class who's speaking, what the situation is. You don't have to know the play, by the way. You don't have to have seen the film either. You have to just make an educated guess according to what you've heard and read. I have two YouTube videos on top. 
uh, which are not from this scene. They're just scenes from different parts of the play with Dustin Hoffman, so you can hear his accent as he tries to play Willie Loman, the main character. If I can find a, a version of this um, from this exact monologue, I'll put it. Probably I'll end up recording it myself and putting the link here. Okay, so let's listen to the whole thing. The original, here we go. Business is definitely business, but just listen for a minute. You don't, you don't understand this. When I was a boy, 18, 19, I was already on the road. And there was a question in my mind as to whether selling had a future for me. Because in those days, I had a yearning to go to Alaska. See, there were, the, there were three gold strikes in one month in Alaska. And I, felt like, and I felt like going out. Just for the ride, you might say. Oh, yeah, my father lived uh, many years in Alaska. He was an adventurous man. We got quite a little streak of self-reliance in our family. I thought I'd go out with my older brother and try to, try to locate him and maybe settle in the north with the old man. And I, was, and, I almost, and I was almost decided to go when I met a salesman in the Parker house. His name was Dave Singel, Singelman. And he was 84 years old, and he'd drummed merchandise in 31 states. And old Dave, he'd go up to his room, you understand. He put on his velvet slippers. I'll never forget. He, he picked up his phone. He called the buyer. And without ever leaving his room, at age 84, he made his living. And when I say that, I realized that selling was the greatest. When I say that, I realized selling was the greatest career a man could want. Because what could be more satisfying than to be able to go at 84 into 20 of 20 of 30 different cities, pick up a phone, and be remembered and loved and help so many people? That should be so many, not so many. So many different people. Do you know? When he died, and by the way, he died the death of a salesman in his green velvet slippers in the smoker of a New York, New Haven, Hartford, going to Boston. When he died, hundreds of salesmen and buyers were at his funeral. Things were sad on a lot of trains for months after that. See, in those days, there was personality in it, Howard. There was respect. There was comradeship and gratitude in it. Today, it's all cut and dried, and there's no chance for bringing friendship to bear or personality. See what I mean? They don't know me anymore. There is death of the salesman. Carlos, who... Do you think it's speaking? Who is it? What kind of person? Uh, uh, a salesman, maybe. A salesman uh, is a very good guess. <laughs> yeah, what, but, make, what makes you say uh, that? Because he's talking about uh, about uh, salesman, but uh, I don't remember the name. Oh, his name was Dave Singleman. Yeah, he's talking about this guy, Dave Singleman. Yeah. Okay. Let's go around the room and see if we can just figure out the facts of this. Ella, where do you think this takes place? Um, somewhere. You have to guess. Okay, uh, somewhere in, in near New York, maybe. Sounds a little New York. Yeah, I agree. Why yeah. do you think so? I agree. Why do you think so? Uh, because uh, he. Explain that uh, he says here in uh, his green uh, velvet slippers in the smoker of the New York. Uh, he explains where uh, it uh, happened. Where it uh, happened. Right, right. Do you know what a smoker is? Uh, something that you smoke, I suppose. Nope. No. Okay. So what? What is? It's the train car where you were allowed to smoke, the smoking section of the old trains. Ah, oh, okay. So, he died, it says, by the way, he died the death of a salesman in his green velvet slippers in the smoker, that means the car, of the train car, of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford. The train that was stopping in New York, New Haven, mm. and Hartford on the East yeah. Coast going to Boston. So he died in the train in 80 whatever. Okay, Giuseppe, when do you think this takes place? What would you say? Uh, wait, wait, wait. That's for Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Uh, okay, sorry. Giuseppe. Come back, Giuseppe. Yeah. <laughs> when do you think this takes place? Uh, mm -mm. 
Actually, I didn't get it. <laughs> Scan through the text a little bit. Are there any clues as to the time period? I mean, think about what he says about his father in particular. Okay, when uh, when he was a boy, 1819. Mm -hmm. And uh, he remember, and uh, he's he's try to 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 remind uh, his period in uh, Alaska, maybe. Mm -hmm. So when do you think this takes place? Uh, Well, one clue about the time period is what we just said before, that there's a smoker car in the train. There are no smoker cars in trains anymore. So it's got to be older than, you know, 15 years ago because that's about when smoker cars, I don't, I don't remember seeing a smoking car in a train. I can't even remember seeing one, to be honest with you. So it's got to be quite a while ago. But that part about Alaska, what does it, what does that tell you about the time period? Uh, probably tell me, uh, tell us about um, the um, the period of industrialization or something like that. Yeah, maybe because it says we've got a little streak of self-reliance in our family. He's talking about going to Alaska. He was an adventurous man. I mean. Do you think it's that adventurous to go to Alaska today? I mean, it is. It's rural, and the weather is kind of intense. But a lot of people live in Alaska. So industrialization. So what are we talking about? The Industrial Revolution? We're talking about 1850? <laughs> what time period are we talking about? Maybe seven, 17 or 18. When the, the when uh, seventeen or eighteen, when the the people uh, started to looking for gold. What nineteen seventeen? When you 19. say when you say seventeen, what do you mean? I mean seventeenth uh, century. Seventeenth century, yes. With trains, like this? No, no. Uh, sorry. He's got a smoker car on the train. No way. <laughs> no, no, no. If you said 1917, I might say, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a little late, but yeah, maybe. I would say... Probably at the beginning of the 19th century. Yeah, or the beginning of the 20th century, too, because Alaska was still something like a frontier, right? But yeah, the reason I say it's got to be later is because... Well, we'll get back to that in just a second. Hang on a second. Who is after you? T. T, how old do you think the narrator is, the, the guy talking? Uh, who? Again? The, the guy who's talking, the guy who's doing the monologue here. How old do you think he is? I think he's about... Uh, uh, just let me think for a moment. Yeah, see if there's any clues in the text. By the way, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. I'm going to correct you if you're wrong, because we're just trying to, we're just, you know, there's nothing obvious in the text. We have to just figure it out from the words. So what's your impression? What's your impression, T? My, uh, my impression about the story? No, about how old the guy is, the guy who's speaking. Um, because we've established. I think I think yeah. he's just uh, he's still a. Uh, mm, is it? Is not, it a young not, kid? He, he's still young. Here, he's he's still young, not not adult. <laughs> and well, look at this. Look at this. At the very end, he says. Um, in those days, he's talking about the David, the guy, the 84-year-old. In those days, there was personality in it. There was respect and comradeship and gratitude. Today, it's all cut and dry. There's no chance for bringing friendship to bear or personality. You see what I mean? They don't know me anymore. 
That's the key. They don't know me anymore. That means he's done this before, right? Oh, yeah. So is he a kid? No. No. No, no. Um. But because of that line. So, what do you think? He's probably probably an old dude, thinking back to the good old days. I would say. Is that unreasonable? He's an old, is, is he an old man? I think he's an old man who's had a miserable life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, yeah. he's, and he's thinking about the good old days and trying to come up with some uh, reason to feel good about his life. I have a feeling that's what it has to do with. Not sure, but maybe. Um, finally, we have Tony from that little village near Bologna. Tony Bologna. Um, what is what is the the salesman trying to get across to Howard? Because he says at the end, you see, in those days there was personality in it, Howard. So he's talking to Howard. His name is Willie, by the way. The salesman's name is Willie Loman. What is Willie trying to express? What's he trying to get across to Howard? What does this monologue mean to you? I think that that uh, he um, uh, the, he just want to explain uh, uh, because he is a salesman. Uh -huh. So what does he want to explain? Sorry, he wants to explain what? Uh, why? Why? Oh, why? He, why he's a salesman? Ah, oh, okay. Got it, got it. And how does he feel about being a salesman, do you think? He feels uh, it's great. He feels because, uh, great. He, yes, because he knows that uh, he can uh, help people, he, mm -hmm. he can uh, gain, uh, get uh, satisfactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, who, who is, who make a lot of friends. Him? Who gets satisfaction, him or the customers? Uh, both. Ah, okay. So there's a lot of satisfaction in the job. There's a lot of satisfaction. Yes. All right. I disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree completely. I think that he feels nothing but regret and bitterness. That's what I think. Because everything that you mentioned, he's saying that, and I totally agree with you. That's what he wants us to think, but I don't think that's how he really feels. I think he's saying that on the surface, but underneath, he feels nothing but regret because he's wasted his life doing something useless, and he realizes it. I have a feeling that's what's really going on. He doesn't want Howard to know that. He's So in other words... He's trying to state all these reasons that he should be satisfied and feel great about it, but in reality, he probably isn't able to make a sale, and he's got to blame somebody, so he blames the customer. <laughs> because he said, right, in, in those days, there was personality and friendship, and now it's all cut and dried and blah, blah, blah. So he's probably, I would guess, that he's not making sales anymore, and he has a lot of regret about choosing this life because it's ending badly and he's got to blame someone so if you can't blame anyone, blame the customer because he says there's no chance here, this part here in bold, there's no chance to bring friendship to bear or personality so I think that means that something's going wrong okay, here's what I'm going to do, we, we, we've got to stop but what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a recording well in the past, I've asked you to go back to the part of the class where I've read the monologue, but I'll make your lives a little easier. I'll make a recording and post it under those YouTube links. In fact, I didn't do it yet, but I'm going to say my recording. So it'll be there when I get it ready. I'll post it there for you. Your job is simply copy and paste the blue text into another document, 
listen, mark up the text as you see necessary. For example, if there's a link, you could just make a little underscore like, like I did here under business is definitely business. Um, you can use all five of the tools. The first tool is find the content words, forget the function words. So for example, business is definitely business. Well, the content words are probably going to be business and business. Tool number two tells you to get the stress, the stress out tool. Business. So it's the biz, the business, that's stressed. So we make it big. In business, we don't say business. So you might want to cut out the I. Business. If you do that, you should put in a little asterisk. Not an asterisk, it's a little a little um, uh, quotation mark at the top. Not a quotation mark, sorry, apostrophe. You should put in a little apostrophe to show that you've taken something out. Then you've got the link it up tool. Maybe here it's years. So I put a little Y there. Business is, business is, nah, it's not. Business is, nah, 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 nah. That's, I'm wrong about that. Business is. Business, business is. It is linked though, so we might want to put a ziz here with our link. There's no yeah, but there is a z. Business is, business is definitely business. Okay, so you're going to mark up the text in this way. You could do all the text or just part of it. It's entirely up to you. You're doing this for yourself to help you interpret what you're hearing. Then you're going to practice with the recording, and in the next class, you're going to perform it and I'm going to give you feedback on your performance. Okay? So we're going to stop there. You try that on your own. Again, copy and paste the marked up text to your own Google Doc. Mark it up by listening to the recording. And in the next class, after you've listened and practiced, literally, play the recording, speak along with it. And do that several times, maybe a few times per day for a couple of days until you feel really comfortable and then try it in class so that I can give you feedback. And in the next class, we'll work on a different skill and a different monologue. Okay? That is the plan. Any questions? Any questions? No. No. Let me see if I can get my camera back on. Google is not letting me turn my camera on. Oh, wait. There it is. OK. Do you think you'll be able to do that? Do you, do you understand what you have to do? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. I expect to see you all next Monday morning at 10 o'clock GMT. Will you all be here? Will you be here? All of you? Of course. If I won't die, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If there's any questions, send me a message through Verbling. You've got the little message to the system. Remember, go to my profile, click follow so that it's easy for us to find each other. If you have any questions or comments, send me a message. I'll be back in just a minute to start the business class. We're doing a brand new unit in a brand new level, how to make an impression. That's what we're going to be working on in just a minute. See you in the next class. Bye for now, everyone. See Bye you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.